Good morning, everyone. We're just going to give a couple more minutes for people to join. I'm going to start in two minutes. Good morning to everyone who joined. We're going to start in a minute, I guess. We're going to give a couple more people time to connect. All right, I think we can we can start if all the panelists are here. All right. Dave Abramovitz, you're with us? Yes, and I'm here. Okay, hi. All right, good morning. Um, we'll be waiting a couple more people to join, but we'll start because we want to be respectful for everyone's time. So uh, my name is Anat Ben Yosef, and um, I'm the Director of Business Development um, for the Southern U.S., he based here in Texas. And it's a great pleasure for me to start this morning uh, this presentation together with um, the Texas Association of Business that has been a great friend of uh, the foundation and a great friend of um, Israel from the Texan side. Uh, so we're happy to have this opportunity to uh, meet and talk today about uh, the uh, collaboration and fun and funding opportunities uh, that the Bird Foundation offers. Um, with me, we have um, Omer Carmel, the director of business development uh, from Tel Aviv, Israel, that is going to talk about the Bird Foundation. And we have a special guest today, David Abramovitz uh, from uh, Trend Micro, um, who will uh, share his bird experience and uh, journey a little later. Um, but we're going to start with uh, uh, David Yari, who will be, um, I guess, starting the day uh, on behalf of the Texas Association of Business. Uh, so thanks for having us today, David. Thank you, Anat. And good morning, Texas, and good, good evening, everyone in Israel. It's now uh, 5 o'clock uh, in, in Israel. On behalf of the Texas Association of Business, the State Chamber of Commerce in Texas, my name is David Yari, and the TAB team under the leadership of Chairman Massey Villarreal and CEO Glenn Hammer are excited to host this informative session with the Bird Foundation. Uh, Bird, for, for those who are familiar with it, uh, it was established in 1977 by the U.S. and Israeli governments to generate collaboration between the U.S. and Israeli companies, both startups and established companies, to stimulate research and development between Israel and the United States. But um, with this, uh, there's a submission that comes up. The Bird Cycle uh, accepts proposals two times a year for general submissions. And with the submission coming up in March, and Omer will share a little bit more about that process, um, we were really uh, wanted to share more information about this, both in terms of now getting the message out for those who are quick and fast movers, and also to start the process and awareness for future cycles. Um, more importantly, uh, Anand introduced herself, but we're excited uh, on behalf of the state of Texas to welcome Anand Ben Yosef, who's in Austin, Texas, 
as the Southern Region Director of Business Development for the Bird Foundation. It represents an exciting opportunity uh, for both Texas and also for Israel uh, to strengthen its ties and also drive innovation through collaborative efforts. Also on, on the webinar is Jeff Emmerich, who handles all of the member uh, relationships. And so, Jeff, thank you for working with all of the companies who join and are part of TAB. There are over 1,500 corporate members who are part of the Texas Association of Business, ranging from small companies to some of the largest companies uh, in the ecosystem. So just a little bit about, uh, especially in the context, Texas, we recognize and appreciate the importance of the relationship, our relationship with Israel and our shared values of independence and resilience form the foundation of our partnership and drive us to explore opportunities for collaboration while looking at opportunities for standing alongside Israel, especially during these critical times. Innovations and initiatives like this, uh, the Bird Foundation aim to strengthen the bonds between our two regions. And this has driven us uh, to look at this opportunity as well as a unique window, especially in this time, not because we see this as a, a way just for, uh, for funding, but we see this as a great way for collaboration. The, the real essence and the secret sauce of what the bird brings is, is it's while it's non-dilutive and, and, and capital that helps drive innovation, uh, the secret sauce is the collaboration, finding the right partners and helping make sure that there can be a fit and the strategic alignment between the companies uh, on the startup side in Israel with, with some of the larger companies who can help them scale it up. So we've already seen some of this uh, success with Texas. And the impact for the Bird Foundation is pretty is pretty evident. And I know Omer will share a little bit more about it, but over 35 grantees have been in the state, including industry leaders like Dell and Siemens. And so this has propelled companies uh, for, for really significant heights. And a little bit about, about why this is such a significant opportunity for both companies, uh, because the what the Bird provides is non-dilutive grants, which covers a significant portion of the of a project budget that will be developed between the two companies. And so this enables joint product development and offers also guidance and a capacity to help commercialize a product and help penetrate the market. So the collaboration is not just about funding, it's not just about R&D, but it's also about go to market and helping uh, an Israeli company find the right partner to help them penetrate and expand their presence in, in the market. And so that helps both the both companies uh, succeed, but it also ensures that the businesses retain their autonomy and their ownership over their creations, but allows them uh, to build a, a strong foundation as they go to market. Um, one of the things that our our chairman has referred to is uh, he calls, uh, you know, he's talked about a lot Israel, and he just came back from a trip uh, last month where he was in Israel for a very quick solidarity trip for four days, meeting with both uh, political leaders, but also uh, several business meetings in the, in, in the country. And Massey talks, refers to Israel always as the, as many people do as the startup nation, but, but he refers to Texas as the scale up nation. And so with some of the recent challenges that have happened uh, in the market and the economy in Israel, specifically due to the war, Right now is the perfect forum uh, to help create these kind of go-to-market partnerships and help scale up cross-border collaborations. And a little bit about um, why, why Texas is the right market and the place to expand is the eighth largest economy in the world with over $3.2 trillion and 32 million citizens and growing around 1,200 people a day moving to the state. Uh, also with the state with the largest amount of Fortune 500 companies in the U.S. and the fastest growing economy in the U.S. soon to surpass France as the seventh largest economy in the world. Uh, Massey's, our chairman's description of Texas as the scale-up state is appropriate. And given the diversity of the Texas economy, this bird grant cycle is relevant for many sectors. Uh, it could be for the health sector with uh, the largest health system in this in the Western Hemisphere with the Texas Medical Center and many hospitals across the state in the cyber sector and AI, uh, agri-tech, space sector and so many sectors, uh, this cycle is open to all. And so if, if, if you have not yet found a partner and you're looking for uh, for a way to, to look at a, a quick relationship or something that can develop for a longer term one for the next cycle, uh, both are not myself and our team at TAB stand ready. Um, we've made a strategic investment and decision 
within TAB to start to open up a, a strategic policy council between Mexico and Texas to help further the $280 billion of trade between Mexico and Texas. And now um, what we see is TAB is not only a resource to navigate the state, but what we have done is, is now put a, a strategic emphasis on expanding our relationship with uh, with the state of Israel and with, uh, with the, the ecosystem and the players there. And so we thank Anat and Omer and others uh, and, and and look forward for your uh, for your partnership. And most importantly, after this call, uh, if your questions, there'll be time at the end for Q&A, as you're seeing on the agenda. Um, if you have questions that you want to follow up on or looking for the right kind of partners uh, in the state of Texas, it's a big state with the largest number of Fortune 500 companies uh, and many other partners. If you're looking for um, partners in your sector, reach out directly to Anat who will make sure to be in touch with us. We have a fantastic partnership. We're excited that she's joined. And uh, with that, I'll turn it back to Anat to, to keep us on schedule. Yes, thank you so much. And thanks for um, you know lining up all that uh, partnership that's going on. I think that it's a very much a mutual interest for all of us as Texans, as Israelis and uh, as everyone, all the stakeholders around here, we want to see growth both sides of the ocean. We want to see um, more success for Texas, for Israel. So this is this is definitely why we're here today. So yeah, as uh, we move through the agenda, I put it on. I think that you can all see. I want to uh, pass the microphone to uh, Omer Cormel. He's going to talk about the foundation in general, and then uh, we're going to try to dive into um, the Texas side of uh, things. Um, and after that, we're going to talk a little bit more about case studies, but uh, more to come. Um, so, Omar, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Anat, and thank you, David, for this uh, great introduction. So, uh, my name is Omar Carmel. I'm Director of Business Development at the Bird Foundation, located most of the time in Israel, but from time to time, I come and visit uh, companies uh, and Anat in, in, in the States, <laughs> and this is part of what we are doing. So uh, if you don't know, uh, BIRD is uh, actually an acronym for National Industrial Research and Development. Uh, as David mentioned already, I mean, it's a U.S.-Israeli uh, joint fund that uh, promotes and supports uh, joint R&D uh, projects uh, between Israeli and U.S.-based uh, partners uh, with what we call mutual benefits to both uh, sides, both partners. Uh, now, if needed, we can assist you in finding strategic partners. This is something we do. I mean, we call this process a matchmaking process. We offer conditional grants for such uh, collaborations, uh, such uh, joint projects. Uh, and this is done on a risk-sharing basis, which means that uh, the grant funds up to 50% of each company's expenses. Um, uh, that you know expenses are associated with the uh, with the expenses of the of the project, and up to a total sum of 1.5 million dollars, and uh, we do claim repayments as royalties only if the commercial uh, revenues are generated from the uh, projects, and this is done at a five percent rate uh, based on sales. Um, now, if the project deliverables uh, is not ready for com commercialization following the project uh, completion then we'll offer uh, a slightly uh, different mechanism of repayment, uh, which are based on some uh, predefined milestone that act uh, as a kind of a trigger for repayment. Uh, next, Anat. Okay, for, for those who are unfamiliar with us, I mean, uh, this is a kind of a brief summary of our uh, achievements, if you will, uh, between uh, the... Um, 1977, when, when the fund was actually initiated until uh, 2020, we have uh, provided more than $500 million for such do joint developments. And uh, uh, at least the same amount was invested by the, the private sector as matching funds. Um, and this was supporting more than uh, 1,500 uh, proof projects which generated the repayments of uh, more than $100 million. And as you can see uh, on the right-hand side, uh, the, the, the pie chart uh, show, shows that, uh, you know, the projects are very di diversified in a way. So they can, and, and they come across almost any, any market segments. Next, please. Okay, uh, this table shows the, and summarizes the application process 
Um, and this is relevant for what we call our, our general program. We have two cycles of submissions each year, and each cycle lasts uh, about uh, three months. Uh, it always starts with submitting an executive summary, which is reviewed by, by us, by the BEL team, and the partners uh, approved to continue the process are allowed to submit the final proposal or the full proposal. And this happens usually about five weeks following the submission of the executive summary. Uh, we assign professional evaluators uh, from both the Israeli side and the US side to evaluate the uh, proposal. And this is done based on some predefined criteria, which I'll elaborate later on. Um, and the evaluator's feedback uh, is channeled um, to us. And all of this is discussed with, with our board of governors um, uh, about uh, three months following the, uh, the first submission, the executive summary submission. Um, and, and each cycle, we, we select between seven to nine projects uh, for funding. Now, the nearest cycle, uh, go back, okay. <laughs> the nearest cycle will begin uh, by uh, March the 7th, which is the deadline for the executive summary submission. So uh, it is a short notice, but still, I mean, um, you can try and make it. Um, and, and if you have some idea in mind, I mean, contact us following this webinar. Next, please. Okay, I mentioned the criteria for uh, the evaluation process. So essentially there are four of them. Uh, the innovation and the technology, we definitely uh, look for projects that uh, demonstrate high level of innovation and a competitive edge, uh, you know, over competing um, uh, technologies. And we do look for, at least at the beginning of the project that uh, we ask you to show some preliminary validation of, of uh, what you are doing. Uh, the second criterion relates to the partner synergy, and uh, uh, we target, you know, uh, projects where the partners have some com have some complementary capabilities that create the synergy between the partners, and this is uh, related both to the technology and also to the marketing aspects of the project. Um, the third one is the the third criterion is the market opportunity. Um, and we look for um, significant value proposition, or in other words, uh, uh, reason for why uh, you know a potential customer will prefer your proposition as compared to uh, what they can find um, in the market uh, uh, as, a, as an alternatives. Um, the fourth, the, the fourth criterion, uh, and the last but not least, is the commercialization or go-to-market strategy. Uh, we ask the, partner to, the partners to demonstrate a compelling uh, commercialization plan uh, that leads to uh, commercial success. Next, please. Okay, finding the right partner, this is uh, one of the key ingredients for a successful project. Um, and you should um, um, think of it as a kind of a strategic decision. You should target a partner that would you would like to collaborate with regardless of our funding and also continue um, this collaboration uh, even after the, the project is, is, is completed. Um, you should make, uh, I mean, I mean we, we recommend you to, to verify that at least one of the partners has uh, market presence and proven sales experience in, in, the, in the market segment you are targeting. Um, we also recommend you to um, uh, that that both partners have some uh, complementary uh, technologies and not competitive one. Uh, this actually creates, in most cases, the value of of this collaboration. And remember that you know uh, the mutual benefit of of this activity of this collaboration actually guarantees the uh, uh, the first of all the commitment of the partners to the success of the uh, project and. Um, and 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 uh, this actually construct uh, the collaboration to be successful. Next, please. Okay. the The next question after uh, such statement is, um, how do you find the right partners? <laughs> um, so I assume most of you are visiting exhibition, convention center, conventions, uh, trade fairs, and so forth. Uh, definitely, these are great places to find potential partners. And uh, now there are many public domain um, databases that um, uh, get and, and, and 
and present valuable um, information about potential partners. And I have provided the, um, uh, in the slide uh, at least uh, three uh, links to uh, public domain databases of uh, Israeli companies. Um, um, it's, it's um, I mean, you can enter and, and, uh, and uh, filter out uh, and screen uh, based on some predefined criteria, uh, uh, type of companies you are looking for or type of technology. So definitely this is something you can use. And in addition to all that, I mean, we are here to assist you. So uh, we have experience uh, of more than 40, 45 years, and this includes, you know, the CRM and the database of all the companies you were, we were in touch with. Uh, um, and and uh, this is a great resource for finding um, uh, the right partners for you. Uh, now, everything and, and all this process starts with the um, uh, sending us the information you are looking for. Um, and this is what we call the matchmaking process. Next slide. So if you go to our website um, and look for the page uh, dealing with the call for proposal on the uh, bottom left uh, side of the screen, you will find this uh, link marked in circle here, in red circle, or red ellipse actually, <laughs> uh, which, call, which is called the Company Matchmaking Info. This is a Word document. And if you'll click on it, next slide. Uh, then, uh, you know, this file will open and we'll ask you to uh, fill it uh, with all the information about you, about your companies, about your company, about, uh, you know, which kind of uh, technology you are looking and uh, if you can, and if you have any specific names, we'll ask you to um, uh, to, to advise us which, uh, which, name, which are these names. And send this file to birdf at birdf.com and we'll start, you know, the whole process of uh, the discussion that will lead to finding, uh, hopefully, uh, at least finding the right partner and, 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 and uh, start making some introductory calls. Next, please. So ba ba based on our experience, I can tell you that um, we find um, from our experience um, three most uh, kind of uh, types of uh, build projects. The first one is what we call the complementary technologies project. Um, and this, this type of collaboration involves, uh, in most cases, uh, merging uh, two different types of technologies that create a new product or solution. And you can think of an example from the biotech industry like you know, taking two ingredients and mix them together to to uh, uh, to actually um, create a new uh, solution with, uh, let's say, uh, increased efficacy of uh, what what it's supposed to do. Another example is kind of a mutual R and D effort uh, of of uh, two different uh, companies uh, that create a mutual uh, product. Next, please. The second type is uh, what we call the system integration project, where um, uh, the technology of one company is seamlessly, you know, integrated into a platform of uh, another company, and the result is a, a better, enhanced, and more robust platform, which uh, uh, better capabilities, better performances, and so forth. And and actually, we'll provide uh, one example of uh, such uh, such a project. The, the third one is uh, what we call the pilot project. Uh, and in this type of uh, project, you know, the partners are validating uh, technology uh, within a real world environment where one of the partners is, is, is in charge of uh, monitoring the technology performance in uh, real life or real world environment and act as a kind of a design partner and, and providing uh, feedback about how the uh, the system um, uh, performs and and uh, and advise the, uh, the the company to actually tweak and, and make the, the right modification in order to get uh, the best uh, uh, outcome. Uh, and the aim is to accelerate the technology's commercialization by demonstrating its effectiveness and and the benefit. A few examples could be clinical validation. You can find many kind of uh, such uh, projects coming from the healthcare uh, market segment. 
Uh, but not not uh, not not just uh, from from this section. I mean, uh, actually, we'll uh, discuss a specific uh, case uh, dealing with uh, industry for all uh, project, which actually involved also uh, performing uh, some pilot activities. Next, okay. So uh, I think I'll leave the stage now to you, Anat. Uh, not leave, but. Uh, handle or uh, make space for you as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, um, of course, as Omar mentioned, the Birth Foundation um, ha has interest in uh, the Israel-US uh, relationship. But um, out here in Texas, I think we're all even more interested in what's happening in, in our state. And um, David mentioned it earlier, and I'll mention it again, um, since the inception of the Bird Foundation, we've had over 35 projects that involve Texas companies, Texas-based companies. Um, this is um, this is just a short list that doesn't even include all of the Texas companies that have enjoyed a Bird uh, grant. I, I actually think that this stopped some sometime in 2020 this list so we've since then had some more even um trend micro who's uh who's uh, presenting today i think they're not even here but just to give you an example of how many millions and millions of dollars were um added into the capacity of the companies in texas to enjoy to really move that needle um, and I want to talk about three case studies today, just to give you an example, to give you something that is more tangible and for you to um, kind of understand how um, it can help. And maybe we'll start with um, with a, a case study uh, that uh, Omer mentioned with a big company. We all know, of course, Texas Instruments, um, with a, what used to be a small company back in Israel. This is a, an older uh, project. It's back in 2007. Um, and we like showing this project because it shows um, two things. One is the fact that there was a, a, a collaborative uh, technology development, taking those two companies' uh, technologies and creating something that wouldn't have been made before unless this cooperation would have come to life. So they uh, they uh, develop a non-invasive uh, vital signs monitor, uh, monitoring system, basically powered by uh, the Texas uh, Instruments uh, DSP chip and using the technology of Sinoga, which, which was an Israeli startup back then. Um, and they created, um, I'll show you a picture. I don't know if it makes uh, a lot of sense, but they created this uh, new product using those um, uh, complementary technologies. Um, I would say that for Sinoga, it also really moved the needle. I think that this project was uh, really a catalyst from for the transformation of Sinoga from a startup to a real thriving company. Since then, of course, it's been years and years um, they've raised, I think, over sixty million dollars since then. They had, they met a lot of success in their field. And um, talking to the people that were involved even back then, we really know that being a partner with such a brand name, being a partner um, under the Bird um, collaboration, which includes the two governments, which include a very uh, interesting group of people that are involved in the due diligence process, uh, meaning that those really high ranked, high up um, eyes are looking at your uh, potential product, are, uh, in, are exposed to your brand, are exposed to your company, helps a lot, uh, not just with this specific pro project, but also throughout um, the way. If uh, down the road, even if you're a small company, a small startup company, if you down the road have that conversation with a potential investor, with a VC or whatnot, and you mention um, all those really important stakeholders and influencers, uh, quote unquote, in your industry um, that went through the process and know your product, know your, your abilities, it really helps build something down the road. And this is something that is important for smaller companies, but also for bigger companies. I don't think that any company 
uh, will say no to you know a thumbs up or an endorsement for the American government from the Israeli government and so forth. So this is uh, this is also a great opportunity outside of the money, outside of the grant itself. So this was just uh, one idea, just to give you an example and to put things into context. Um, another. A uh, case study that we want to share is uh, with another uh, household name, I guess, uh, which is uh, Siemens. Um, and they uh, really created an interesting project with uh, an Israeli company called Skillreel. Um, not long ago, back in 2021, um, they integrated um, their AR technology, augmented reality technologies, um, together with the abilities that Siemens brought. And they were almost... Um, and you can read about it um, also in the internet. And they were almost missing this like missing link, this missing part, and we're looking for a way to find that secret sauce. Uh, if uh, if I'm uh, kind of uh, stealing David David's uh, David's term, um, who can help us solve that? Who can help us close that link? And this um, process were was really interesting. Uh, how those two companies kind of helped each other to create something a whole that is really bigger than its parts. And you can see, and again, I, I know that there are uh, people here and people that are listening to the, to this, to the uh, future recording. Um, you come from different backgrounds. I just think of those partnerships as really something that wouldn't have happened um, if not that collaboration, if not that partnership. And this is what we um, in BIRD are also looking for, uh, looking for something that will really make the change, that will really be the catalyst of a successful um, new project. Um, if it's a product, if it's uh, something that is more feasible, if it's software, if it's a collaboration and combination of software and hardware, um, if those are uh, systems or new ways of um, exploring in the health, uh, in the health area, in the uh, all kind of technology, industrial areas. Uh, but we're very much open to a lot of different ideas and a lot of different companies uh, from from both sides of the ocean. So we, it, it's a little, it's a little confusing sometimes because we're so agnostic to um, sectors or to areas um, of the industry. But we're we, what is really standing behind our cause is to to really curate and culture and cultivate and really assist that process of innovation through that collaboration that will bring added value to both countries to to both states here if we're talking with Texas about Texas and Israel but also of course um, since we are uh, we are connected to uh, federal uh, to federal uh, resources, so to both countries, to the U.S. and Israel, to create something that really helps both sides individually and and all together. And I think that um, maybe the the interesting part of today's uh, meeting is really our um, third case study. Uh, we have uh, today Dave Abramowitz. Um, from um, Trend Micro, that were uh, it's a company that's a recent grantee and recent partner of the Bird Foundation, and we wanted uh, to bring him here today um, to share his personal and professional experience and uh, Trend Micro as a Texas-based company. Uh, what brought them for to create this collaboration? How they found out about Bird? How was the process for them? I'm kind of leading you, Dave, <laughs> toward it, to it, but uh, how was the process with Bird and maybe kind of in retrospect, um, where do you see yourself uh, in, in, in regards to that, uh, that collaboration, that process that you went through? So I hope you're here, um, Dave. The, yeah. I am here. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Excellent. Okay, I didn't see my video up on the, okay. on the webinar, but that's that's fine. So thank you. Thank you very much, Anat. Uh, for those unfamiliar with Trend Micro, we're a global cybersecurity company, are headquartered in uh, Texas. And uh, this was actually the first bird cyber pilot. So the, the first bird cyber award uh, that we received is actually between us, in, in this case, between two companies, between us and a company from Israel called Briskana, who's been around since uh, 2016. So they have a very complementary attack surface risk management 
technology that very much complements our own security solutions. And so together we are tasked with researching and developing a solution that's specifically for real-time risk assessment for small to medium airports and seaports. So that's gonna include IT security, OT security. If you think of all of the different things that are happening at a port, the marine terminal, the cargo management systems, the land side facilities and so forth. So the solution we're developing with Riscana is mission specific to maritime. We wanna keep it very uh, simple to set up and give a holistic view of what's happening at the port. If, if you just look at the situation, what's going on now that as background to what led to this, we, we're in a period of global destabilization, basically due to our adversaries and their proxies hitting the maritime industry hard. And that's severely impacting our supply chains. Uh, ports have zero downtime for maintenance windows. Their networks are highly complex. And those networks also include a healthy dose of legacy systems. You also think about ship to shore cranes. Those are manufactured by our adversaries. Um, so that makes our efforts to build this cybersecurity capacity and resilience for seaports uh, a very high priority. And that's what the Bird Foundation has uh, brought to us. Just this morning, I don't know if you saw the news, but the Biden-Harris administration announced a series of actions aimed at enhancing the security and resilience of the United States maritime infrastructure and supply chains. Um, so they're going to give the DHS more authority to combat maritime cyber threats. And so that's, it's very timely. That is exactly what's going on uh, today and, and, and why this project is so important. In terms of the process, I, I guess it took us about a handful of months to craft our final proposal, first the executive summary, then the final proposal, and about another 50 days or so to receive the award. So the whole process itself did not take a very long time. It was very smooth, um, meeting regularly with the Bird Foundation to, to check status and those sorts of things and obviously constantly in touch with our uh, partner, Riscana. Currently, we, are, we have some integration already in this sort of research and development phase. There's a period of about um, 10, to, 10 to 15 months, I believe, for, for the R&D effort, and then the development starts. And so we are meeting with uh, ports globally as design partners for this endeavor to help us put together what this solution will look like and what the different pieces to it will be, as it's not going to be necessarily the same um, for every port. Uh, that's where we, we are now. And as we continue on with our design partners, uh, we're going to have a solution developed that can then uh, be you know, globally distributed. So we'll be able to uh, focus on the 18 strategic ports in the U.S. and also the ports globally uh, that are affected by uh, the su supply chain activity. So we're really excited about that. We are very grateful for the support and the collaboration we've received uh, from Trend Micro Japan and Trend Micro Israel. And we are very much uh, looking forward to opportunities to foster cooperation and innovation between the U.S. and Israel because at the end of the day, the only way we're going to be able to successfully combat threat actors and the threats are, uh, is through a strategy of international cooperation. Uh, so we're, we're very grateful to the Bird Foundation for this opportunity. It's a very exciting time to be doing this work. Uh, and as I mentioned from the uh, Biden-Harris administration announcement this morning, it's very much top of mind for our own government and so I would uh, highly encourage other companies to participate in, uh, in this process in partnering with another company or research facility and, and furthering this whole charge to, to basically honor our mission, which is to make the world safer. And so thank you. I appreciate uh, Anat and, and the Bird Foundation 
uh, supporting us and taking us through this process. And it's very, very meaningful work for us. And it's been a great process so far. Wow. Okay. That was very inspiring. Now I don't want to ruin it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> kind of want to take you back a little bit just for the sake uh, of the webinar. Oh yeah. Making a world a better place. I'm sorry. That was very inspiring. Um, so uh, <laughs> I kind of, kind of dialing back to technicalities, which I know it's not um, as it's inspiring, but I think that some of the people who are listening to us want to understand maybe how to start. And of course, again, we cannot stress enough how um, we're here exactly for the sake of those partnerships and the success of uh, those processes, because really your success is our success. Um, and that's why why we're here for, and that's why the two governments are um, spending a lot of resources in general to make this happen. But maybe if you can walk us through a little bit about the process of um, you know, finding the right partner. Um, did it come from your side, from Riscana's side? Um, how did you How did you meet? Or you know, or did you consider other partners? What What was that um, kind of sweet spot for you? Sure. So we were we have been for the past handful of years part of the delegation of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce to Cyber Week in Israel. And so at, a, at one of those conferences, we were having discussions and the topic came up about the Bird Foundation and this opportunity. And so that led directly to us uh, taking a look and, and applying. And there was a, a suggestion during that meeting of, you know, we know what you do, so here's a partner for you that we think would be a good fit. And that turned out to be Riscana. Uh, and that relationship has been tremendous for us. Uh, it turned out to be a perfect partnership. And so that's how we were, we were brought together. And then we just started the process of, um, of, of developing our application, submitting and, and waiting for the, the good news. Yeah, great. So it's really all about networking, right? <laughs> like anything else. I, I I could not agree more. And I think that this is something that um, a lot of companies are interested and in, have heard of the foundation and have heard of the opportunity and not sure where to start. So this is a good start. Um, we do offer and Omar went through it and the presentation, of course, will be shared or you, you're very welcome to reach out to us later. But there are a lot of databases and resources and interest um, of Israeli companies. And of course, when we speak with uh, Israeli stakeholders, we tell them about the resources that are here in the U.S., specifically in Texas. We have, of course, TAB, who are um, great partners, but you know, there are so many ways to to find, to make it happen. So we're just, you know, here um, to help. And thank you so much, Dave, for, you know, being here. And I'm sure, um, I hope that there will be, you know, maybe more questions on the, on the chat, um, I'm, I'm sure you'll be happy to answer. Um, yeah, so thanks for your story. Uh, and this is uh, me here in Austin, Texas. I'm actually gonna be in Dallas next week. If anyone's here from there, um, sh let me know. Maybe we can even meet in person, but of course I'm always happy to um, connect uh, by phone or Zoom or or whatnot. And Omer um, is our boots on the ground. Uh, on the Israeli side, we have a pretty a pretty big team back in Tel Aviv. Um, as Omer mentioned, um, Bird has been around for over forty years now. Uh, the tremendous network we have in the Israeli ecosystem and the personal connection and the personal knowledge um, is really good as gold and um, outside of everything that one can find by themselves um there's always the opportunity to talk to us and talk to me talk to omar talk to um other members and we'll we'll try to help you find you know that right fit and vice versa we will sometimes definitely reach out and tell you hey um, there's this and that company, they're interested in your technology or they're interested in showcasing their technology and see if there's there's a fit here. And um, we're we're part of this chain and we are, we want to be that collaboration uh, vehicle uh, for, for both sides. So first and foremost, just know that we're here. Um, and as also was mentioned a couple of times, and I'm just going <laughs> to say it again, we have a deadline coming up on March 7th for this round of um, um, 
of uh, uh, of funding. Uh, but I'm also, again, we're very happy to accept and talk to anyone who's already kind of ready to go. Maybe you already have any kind of ongoing partnership that is in the back burner and you want to accelerate it or you know, you already know what you want and what you need and we can make it happen. We do still have, you know, two weeks for this. Um, the first step um of application, it's called our executive summary. It's pretty straightforward. It's more about uh, the general information about the project. If you already know what your project is about, if you already have that partner, it shouldn't be that complicated to present that executive summary. But of course, as mentioned, bird um, cycles have been going on uh, since 1977. Every year we have two major cycles that are spring and summer. Uh, for our um for our bird for our bird foundation for bird funding we also have other opportunities throughout the years that are more specific to uh, projects in um they've mentioned the um, cybersecurity um, homeland security um, energy um, a lot of other opportunities are there throughout the year so I think that taking the first step is, the most important part of it. Um, and then we will help you understand which route uh, to take and what uh, what avenue will be the right one uh, for you. Um, again, it's um, bi-national um, research and development foundation. It means that it's uh, funded and um, join the stakeholders from both sides, from Israel and the US or US and, the Isra and Israel. So we're all trying to create something that will be um, fruitful and successful um, for everyone, I guess. Um, so uh, we, I know that we said that we we're going to leave some time for um, questions. I know that there were some happening the, in the chat. So maybe Omer, want to yeah, go? Yeah, there, there were, there were uh, one specific question uh, yes. was dealing with uh, uh, drones uh, technology or drones companies. The, that can transport biological uh, material from from place to place. I mean, I, I there are several companies actually Israeli companies dealing with with, with this kind of subject. So uh, just uh, so, you know, it was Jeff, I believe Jeff D Dalton. Mm -hmm. So just uh, send me an email, I'll, and you know, and we'll start the uh, discussion. I'll give you a few names, and I want to emphasize something which. Uh, I want you to uh, to understand. I mean, um, we we like you know to communicate with the companies. I mean, uh, we don't like to find uh, you know uh, uh, in at the deadline uh, finding uh, executive summaries of companies uh, that uh, didn't actually approach us before that and uh, and discussed with us. So and and this is in general, I think, is important. I mean. <laughs> um, you, you know make make the move and and don't don't be afraid to contact us i mean we're here to assist you uh and um everything or almost everything is related to communication good communication between between human beings and between <laughs> between companies and 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 us the world foundation uh, so through communication through discussions we understand better what you are looking for and understand better you know uh, which kind of uh, potential partners um, um to to suggest to you uh, uh so so everything is is related to good communication with us and uh, to jeff uh, please uh, contact me and uh, describe exactly you know um the the application you have in mind regarding the transport of uh, biological material and i'll um, i'll i'll guide you and 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 we'll find together the the, the best possible uh, partner now there was another another um, questions dealing with um, it says as follow. I mean, similar to how you work with TAB, uh, could you share examples of how you work with local chambers and EDOs to identify uh, prospective companies to work with? So, um, Anat, you have any idea about uh, this yeah, issue? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, I think. Oh, thanks, David, for that. Um, yeah, Brad and everyone else. And if you are um somehow connected to other organizations, we're um you know we're partnering today with Tab, but of course it's not exclusive. We're just trying to share share the word and share the opportunity because a lot of it. 
Um, a lot of the, even though the Bird Foundation has been around for again over forty years, um, I, I would a lot of times I would I would reach out to other companies or again um, local chambers of commerce, local organizations, um, sh talk about the foundation and they didn't even know it existed. Um, so we're very much happy to cooperate. We can definitely organize um, a meeting, uh, something like this, like a webinar. We can share resources. We can do, um, you know, Zoom discussions that are not a webinar, more like a, of an open discussion. Um, I can definitely come by. Um, I'm based here uh, in Texas, so you know, not everything is a hopscotch, <laughs> a drive away. But I'll, I'll definitely come by. We're, we're. We would love to cooperate and I will even add something else. You can definitely feel free to use our opportunity as your tool to promote your interest, to open those doors, to share, to follow up with maybe um, interesting companies that you would like to maybe work with or someone that you haven't been in touch with for a long time and you're looking for that catalyst or there, that reason to reach out. We, I'm, I'm, very happy for you to kind of mention the bird opportunity, create that uh, um, that collaboration, that contact. Feel free to just you know reach out to whomever you think might be a good uh, partner, and just you know mention bird and 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 take and take you know and take this opportunity as if you were the one um, to find it. Totally fine by me. Um, so yeah, just, just reach out and, and we'll make it happen. Um, you're welcome. You're welcome, Brad. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you soon. All right. So, um, David, um, other David, Omer, um, Jeff, anyone in the chat, any more comments, notes, questions, uh, before we call it a day. Uh, we we just want to thank you guys. Uh, your the, the bird team is a, a hardworking team, a global team. They're not you know they're all across America in multiple cities, and there's a strong team in Israel. And as you can see by Omer's immediate response, uh, they're incredibly responsive, incredibly professional, and and as Dave said, they're committing to make the world uh, a better place. And so this this kind of collaborative research, you can see some of the results that have come out. And and this is um this is a first foray for us at Tab. We we're excited that Anat just joined. And while this grant cycle is March seventh, you know in Israel things it, it's the it's the country of the impossible. So things that happen very quickly. Uh, you learn very quickly to be spontaneous working in Israel, and things happen quickly. And so even though March seventh, in American terms, seems like seems like a long time uh, in Israeli terms, seems like a long time away. It's around the corner, but we can make if things can happen quickly. And if not. Uh, there's a cycle coming up and there are always many more. So we look forward for people who want to reach out uh, both to our, to TAB, to the TAB team, uh, to the different chambers who are part of TAB or work with TAB. Um, there's always uh, opportunities and we're looking forward to make these kind of collaborations or in, in, as they say in Hebrew, shidduch, a connection, a match. And this is where the matches come in. And uh, we look forward to having good matches that that last and, and uh, that produce a lot of good offspring and products. Uh, for the long term. So thanks everyone. Thanks a lot for putting this together and, and Omer for joining and Dave next time we have the Texas Capitol. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. All right. Have a great day. Thank you for joining us. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.